Organizing an old photo in On One Layers requires three things, a color fill layer, blending, and masking. I found this photo at an antique store, so I scanned it into my computer, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use layers and masking to add some color to this image. I'll start out by going over to the Layers panel, and I'm going to click on the new Color Fill Layer icon. The Color Fill Layer window pops up, and the first thing I'm going to do is change my blending mode to color. This way I can actually see the image below, and this is likely the blending mode that I'll use, especially when working on the skin color, which is going to be the first thing that I'm going to work on. Now, finding the correct skin color can kind of be the trickiest part in these. Some of the other colors you can really just choose, for the most part, whatever you want. But skin color has to look good for it to have any type of realism to the colorization. So let's go ahead and just start out by clicking on this fill color swatch and see what we have. Depending on the operating system you use, you'll probably see a different type of color selector. I'm on a Mac, and the Mac system pulls up this color wheel, and I also have some other options at the top. I'm going to select the color sliders, and this drop down here allows me to select either a grayscale, RGB, a CMYK, or HSB, which stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm going to stick with the RGB slider, and down at the bottom, I have this option for a hex color. I don't know what I want to put in here yet. However, if I go to my browser and do a quick search, I can find something like this. Now, what I searched for to find this particular website was I just searched for skin color HTML. You could also search for skin color hex code. These are going to give you similar options. You may not get this exact list, but if you have this on your screen, you can actually pull some of those numbers in this hex line here out and actually use these for the codes for your own skin. So I'm just going to pick one of these here, this EEC EB3. Don't worry, this doesn't have to mean anything to you right now. This is basically just a code representation of this skin color. So I'll take this code and I'll type it into that little color swatch area in my On One color picker. Okay, so now I have that color added. It still doesn't look quite right, and I'm, I'm just focusing on her face here and the little boy's face, uh, just kind of visualizing what that will look like in terms of skin tone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the opacity down for this fill box, and maybe go up to about 70%. 72, it looks like I got it too, and that's good. I'll click OK. Now it's time to start masking. I'm going to press B on my keyboard to activate the brush tool. And then at the top, I'm going to click on that invert button, so that way my layer is hidden, and now when I paint in, I'll be bringing that color back. I'm going to zoom in using uh, Command Plus. And I'll zoom over to that area. I'm going to reduce my brush size. I'm also going to increase the feather. And then I'm just going to start brushing. One of the things to keep in mind when you are masking uh, and adding color into an old photo is that you kind of have to just rely on old-fashioned masking skills. Uh, you can't use the perfect brush because you're working off of a color fill layer, so there is no difference in contrast or color. It's all just one uh, color. If you make a mistake, go ahead and hit X and then just paint out. And you can also resize your brush using those bracket keys. So what I would do with this image is I would work with the skin color, and I would get all of the skin color in the entire image. So I'd work on the little girl here first. Let's try and get a really kind of a quick mask here so I can jump to the next thing. And then I would go over to the little boy. Now you could always try a different skin color if you wanted to. You don't have to stick with the same skin tone throughout the entire image. Now you might notice that I'm brushing right over the eyeballs, and when I do things like this, I tend to kind of get the bulk, uh, kind of work in bulk. So I'll start by just masking over everything. Then, in this case, I would hit X, reduce the brush size, and then I would paint out over those eye areas. All right, so that's just kind of a quick a quick masking job, and I'll just kind of skip the eyes over on the little boy. But the great thing about working uh, with color fill layers is if you wanted to change anything, you can just right click over that fill swatch, select edit color fill layer, and you can change the color. 
Maybe make it a little darker or maybe reduce the opacity. It's very versatile. Now let's add a different color and I'll just kind of focus on the checkered part of her shirt here. I'm gonna go back over to the layers panel, click on the new color fill layer icon. And this time I'm gonna select a uh, red. I'll find something kind of in a, a deep red color. I'll just try that, start out, reduce the opacity and then click OK. I have my brush tool active, so I'll go ahead and click the invert button at the top, make sure I'm painting in, and then start brushing. Now this is just a quick demonstration, so I'm not too concerned with my edges. Uh, if I were doing this for real, it would probably take quite a while. I would get in really close. I would make sure that my edges are nice and clean. In this case, the image is not tack sharp, so there, it makes it a little easier to work with a, a feathered brush and you have a little bit of leeway uh, with the actual um, painting and not having to worry about those edges being perfectly sharp. So I'm just trying to get a quick mask here so I can show you uh, something else that you might want to try. And I think that's good to start out. Okay, so I have the blending mode here set to color but it's not the only blending mode that you can work with. If you use the drop down in the layers panel, you can hover over different blending modes and see if there's something else that actually looks a little bit better. Lighten and screen do a, something a little bit different. It adds color into those faded dark areas and kind of the gray areas. And uh, soft light is a nice one as well. So it kind of just depends on the area that you're working in and what type of look you're going for. So I'll go ahead and select soft light for this one. And I'm gonna zoom in and just keep masking away. By the way, I'm using the X key to toggle back and forth between paint in and paint out. And those are just a few basic things to keep in mind when you are colorizing old photos. If you're unsure about either a skin color or even a hair color, go ahead and Google it and either use that color code from any website that you find or just try and match the color using your color picker.